Ha! Feel the power of my blade, villain. One sec. So that's why there was a discount on it. Alright, so enchantments. This is something that one of my viewers brought up. Which magical enchantments would be most effective in a real-life sword fight if magic was real? Which is a bit of a stretch, of course, but this is less about realism and more about logic. And there are, in fact, fairly logical magical systems in fiction. And one example would be Brandon Sanderson, who has come up with a, a system of magic that follows certain rules and has logic to it. Uh, it's still magic, of course, so it's not, it can never be that realistic, but it's got logic and consistency. And uh, this is one of my favorite examples of satisfying magic in a fantasy setting where you know how it works, you've got an idea, you know what to expect. It's not just the deus ex machina of you know, whatever ability we need right now and, and magic, well, it works in mysterious ways or whatnot. By the way, I'll leave a few links in the description below to novels by Brandon Sanderson that are my personal favorites, so you can check them out. Anyway, so let's talk a bit about magical enchantments. Now, I'll talk a little bit about a few of the kind of classic ones, but also some that I thought up recently, although I'm pretty sure none of this is really new because everything has already been done by somebody sometime, somewhere. So there's only so much you can imagine really and, and almost everything has been done. Anyway, so I, I will exclude the obvious overpowered stuff like the death enchantment, anything the blade touches dies or disintegrates immediately, or an enchantment that gives you god powers or makes you immortal or anything like that. that that's all That's all a bit much. I guess the closest, uh, if you will, reasonable equivalent to death enchantment would be life leech, perhaps, where any wound that you cause in your opponent heals one of yours, something like that. Um, anyway, so let's start out with a classic, fire enchantment. So that's something that you see a whole lot, looks cool and all that, but how practical would it be really? Um, depends. If you just have a burning flame emerging from the blade, that doesn't really help a whole lot. I mean, you could literally douse the blade in inflammable oil or gasoline and set it on fire and, and swing it around. Um, chances are you might ruin the blade, you might affect the tempering, or otherwise it would not be good for the blade. But if you did, then what would it do? Well, again, not a whole lot. If you, if you, if there's a flame and you, you move your hand through it quickly, it's not going to do anything to your hand. In fact, I've even seen footage of an industrial worker in a factory uh, just casually scooping through molten steel. So if, if it's fast enough, it's not going to burn you. Uh, damage occurs when you're you know, exposed to fire for long periods of time. So a quick cut is not really going to do anything. You would have to hold that against somebody for a bit to burn them, and I don't think they would let you. However, if it's a different kind of enchantment, let's say anything the weapon touches becomes superheated. That would be useful, and that would be quite a, a nifty anti-armor weapon, really. Just imagine you touch somebody's uh, breastplate, you know, it doesn't even, you don't even have to strike it hard, just you, you touch it and suddenly it, it starts heating up more and more. Maybe even if it's strong magic enchantment, maybe it, it even goes to red hot. Yeah, the, the wearer is going to have a very bad day, is going to struggle to get out of the armor as quickly as possible while it starts burning through the, the layers of cloth and possibly even setting them on fire or at least making them smaller underneath, that would be a very bad time. Or, you know, if, if the blade heats up, uh, I mean, 
shouldn't be as big of a deal if you have a, a wooden handle. I mean, if it gets to a certain point, then the handle is also going to start combusting, probably. But it wouldn't uh, transmit quite as much. But if the entire thing heats up, guard and all, suddenly you can't touch the guard anymore, you can't touch the pommel anymore, and you are always in partial contact with something like this in particular, where you put the finger over the guard, uh, this you suddenly couldn't use anymore. Like, I can't even figure out any grip in which I'm not at least partially in contact with metal. So if this suddenly was super hot, that would be quite a problem. So what about a water enchantment? Doesn't sound terribly impressive, water. What, what could that possibly do on a weapon? But I could see a way in which this could be quite effective. Uh, you know, water jet cutters, those are pretty scary things. They can cut through steel, highly effective. And all that is, is a stream of water extremely highly comp compressed. And so if you had either water magic or maybe a combination of water and air magic that allows a certain amount of water to be concentrated into a very dense stream and then shot at super high speed and then let's say it comes around, circles around here, comes down the other side and this happens extremely fast and just keeps circling or, or cycling, flowing, if you will, around, but with the kind of power that a water jet cutter has, that would be very effective. It would come with some drawbacks of, well, for example, you couldn't really parry. If somebody swings a steel sword at you and you just put your, your water jet magical sword in the way, this cuts right through it, this would still travel on. How much force does the blade have left when it's in two pieces? Now this piece, because it's not supported anymore by the rest of the sword and the arm and everything, it, it, suddenly the mass is reduced to very little. So if this hits you, probably not that big of a deal. If the rest hits you, not ideal, but it would definitely be a lot less effective than it would otherwise be, unless you get it in the eye or something. Armor would definitely be useful in that case because fragments could still hurt you but you should be able to cut through a lot, really, if the stream is powerful enough. It would require a lot of power, but then again, magic you know, depends on where it gets the energy from. If it taps into some sort of more or less infinite energy source, like the ether or the mana or whatever it happens to be, then sure, why not? What about air enchantment? Again, may not seem terribly impressive unless you're thinking, highly compressed air blade sort of deal. But what I'm thinking would be something like an explosive rapier, for example, or some kind of explosive thrusting blade. What I mean by explosive is, let's say you have channels in the blade, which of course would weaken the blade, that would be a drawback. But let's say you have some air inside and, and the air is being compressed to, you know, Say you have a thousand times the volume of air that would normally be in the blade, or even more, 10,000, who knows what. And it's compressed to fit in that space. And the magic keeps it compressed. And then when, you, when the blade enters a body, suddenly everything is violently expelled. Like all the compressed air suddenly expands. So it would be sort of like an explosion inside someone, someone's body. That does not sound very pleasant. And there is, in fact, a real-life equivalent, sort of, uh, the wasp injection knife. That's a knife that has a CO2 capsule in, in the handle. So you would stab that into something and push the button and it would release all that CO2 from the capsule, which would not only mean suddenly a lot of pressure inside the body, but also it would freeze or partially freeze the internals, which is, uh, yeah, that does definitely not sound terribly pleasant. I don't know if that one has enough power to really do substantial damage. I haven't seen any tests on suitable organic matter analogs. It's usually things like watermelons and whatnot, for obvious reasons, but if there was something more powerful that, that basically has the 
the concussive force of a grenade or something like that, then yeah, that, I could see that. Speaking of freezing, ice enchantment could also work, of course, uh, not so much as in an ice blade, because that would just be too brittle unless it's magically reinforced, but more a blade that rapidly and extremely reduces the temperature of anything it touches. So imagine you are cutting into a body and this just freezes the internal organs or freezes the blood inside of the body or freezes arteries shut and things like that. Yeah, that would be very um, chilling to think about. Okay, so those are my takes on some of the classic elemental enchantments. Now, what other stuff could you come up with? Well, what about density shift or mass shift? Mass and density are, of course, connected. So let's say as you swing the, the sword blade or other weapon, the density is reduced and the mass is reduced. So it's lighter as you swing it around. It's, it's easy to bring to pretty high velocity. And then the moment it impacts something, the mass suddenly increases dramatically because then you have a lot more kinetic energy in there of course potential to do a lot more damage without needing super strength now super strength you know that, that would be another possible enchantment you know anything that enhances the wear the user's abilities you know extra strength speed endurance etc but this would be a way to do that without needing more strength so as you swing it around, it has standard sword mass, essentially. But as soon as it hits, like for maybe a split second, it suddenly has the mass of a car or who knows what. Uh, that would be very effective, at least assuming that it would not break the bones in your arm. Because suddenly uh, there's still a lot of shock going on. So yeah, you'd have to talk to a physicist about that. I'm not sure about that part. That could be potentially very... Uh, dangerous. Let's assume the opponent has a heavier weapon, like a long sword with two hands against my messer with one hand. Assuming equal strength, I would not be able to parry this effectively, at least not with a static block. I could do a flexional parry, but it's a different story. So say somebody strikes at me, if this is all I have, this is probably going to blow through and hit me in the head. However, if I have this density enchantment, I could make this super heavy at the moment of impact. So now I have the mass I need to withstand this. And as soon as the, the parry is complete, it would return to its, its previous mass. Even if I was using the long sword with one hand and receive the cut, this feels like I can pretty easily parry that just because there is more mass in it. So it's got more inertia. In other words, you need more energy to push through and hit the defender. Okay, what about magnetic enchantment? That could also come in pretty handy. So if you could... <laughs> Somebody's making grimaces at me. <laughs> Faces, I should say. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so if you could control magnetic attraction and repulsion, let's say, you know, with how you grip it or some kind of button or who knows what. And let's say there is a cut coming in and I'm not sure exactly what angle it is because sometimes some people are really good at uh, fainting you out. So let's say it looks like a vertical cut and then it comes in and comes around and strikes me in the arm, stuff like that. So some fighters are really good at, at second or making you guess exactly where the attack is coming from. Or let's say you're slower than the, the opponent. Well, what could you do? You turn on the, the magnetic attraction and let's say I, I parry high, but it comes low. And so, but the magnet goes, whoop, it just brings them together. So, or let's say I'm being attacked before I can even react. So I'm, I'm in a guard, the attack comes in, I don't react in time, whoop, magnet. Like they immediately stick together. And then I turn it off and do whatever I need to from here. Magnetic repulsion might not be terribly useful for weapons unless you have the heavier weapon. Because if you use repulsion and uh, say your opponent's weapon is heavier, then your weapon is probably just going to bounce off theirs and not be terribly useful. However, if somebody cuts at you and you use your repulsive 
enchantment. So repulsive. And their blade would just bounce off yours, if yours is heavier at least. However, when we could use that without a problem would be, say, a breastplate. If your breastplate has a repulsive magnetic enchantment and somebody strikes at it, it's just going to bounce off and throw their arm back and leave them vulnerable to counterattack. Which also tells you that combining the magnetic enchantment with the mass shift enchantment would be very effective. Because, say, you increase the mass of your weapon a lot for a moment while also using the magnetic repulsion on your opponent's weapon and you just fling it all over the place and leave them vulnerable. Yeah. Is this nerdy enough for you yet? Okay, since this was a lot of blah blah, I'm going to get to the final point. And uh, if you like this kind of video, I might make more about this topic because you could come up with a whole lot of different ideas for enchantments and whatnot. So the last thing I want to talk about is from the Mistborn series, again by Brandon Sanderson. In short, this particular form of magic allows the user to ingest certain metals and burn them to create particular effects, and each metal has its own individual effect. Now, one of the metals is called Atium, and burning that causes you to be able to anticipate or see the future. You see a, a shadow form of the opponent that is like a few moments ahead in time. So if the opponent is planning to uh, throw a downward cut, for example, you will see that shadow image of the opponent doing the downward cut before the opponent does it. And this, if you could have that as some kind of enchantment in a, a weapon or armor or helmet or whatever it is, that in my opinion would be the most useful ability. Uh, Aside from super speed, which I've already talked about in another video, will be linked down below, uh, speed would be incredibly useful in combat. But this basically has a similar effect. Being able to look a brief moment into the future would be just decisive for a fight. Even if you're physically weaker, even if you're slower, less skilled, blah blah blah, etc. doesn't really matter because you already see what is going to happen and you can take a moment to consider, oh, okay, so if they're doing that, I'm just gonna dodge here and, and counter cut or whatever. You have all the options, really, and the opponent can do nothing. In the novels, essentially fighting somebody who, who's burning ATM means you're doomed. There's no way you can possibly win. Um, there are interesting scenarios and it like, for example, two ATM users against one another. But I'm not going to spoil that. It's in the novels and they're worthwhile reading. Anyway, let's leave it at that for now. I hope this pleased those who always like the discussions of practical aspects of fantasy weapons and whatnot. And, um, well, thanks for watching. Have a good one, folks.